Chapter one of A Game of Thrones begins with a grim and bloody incident, the beheading of a deserter from the Night's Watch. It's seen through the eyes of Bran Stark, one of the half a dozen rotating close third person characters who carry the book. When I read through this chapter, looking for page turning elements, I was a bit surprised. I expected to see more of what we saw in the prologue in the last video, but that wasn't the case. I mean, there was some mystery, a bit of low grade conflict between the characters and a few mild shivers of dread communicated through shadow description, but it, it wasn't nearly as dire or intense as it had been in the prologue. The focus in this first chapter was on character creation and world building through scene or what we might call dramatic incident. We already know about the first dramatic incident, the beheading of the, of the deserter. Second incident occurs when the party returning to the castle finds a dead wolf, a surprisingly big wolf, in fact, with six nursing puppies. We learn some important details about the story world. We learn that we're in the ninth year of summer and that summer is now coming to an end. We learn that in this world, there are frightening creatures called wildlings and giant wolves or dire wolves. More importantly, we learn a great deal about some of the main characters. We learn that Bran, the point of view character for this chapter, is nervous and excited. He tries to act older than his seven years and pretends not to be bothered by the fact that his father is about to cut someone's head off with a broadsword. This is relatable, isn't it? I mean, not the beheading, but a little boy's hero worship his father and his desire to seem brave. Bran's actions are even more sympathetic as the chapter goes on. He intervenes to save the wolf pups, showing willpower, compassion, and courage. And we can totally relate to the desire to save those fluffy wolf, wolf pups. We root for him to succeed. In the execution scene, time slows down. There's an abundance of detail from a close, loving description of the sword that will be used in the ex execution to the prisoner's head being forced down onto the hard black wood, to the blood spattering and soaking into the snow, to a minor character kicking the head away in disdain. This is George R.R. R. Martin. It's this combination of familiar and unfamiliar details presented with clarity and vivid specificity that makes the world of this novel so immersive. The Stark family, though brutal, lives by a noble code of honor. The man which passes the sentence should swing the sword. Jon Snow takes Bran's side on saving the wolf pups and Eddard Stark, the family patriarch, shows his own generosity of spirit by agreeing to let it happen. This turns out to be a sympathetic group of people the kind of people a reader can imagine spending a lot of time with. This in itself is quite an achievement given the brutal piece of vigilante justice that forms the chap chapter's main action. And it shows us some new sources of narrative drive that we didn't notice in the prologue, immersive world building and character sympathy. But for me, the key point here is that we're seeing all this through Brand's eyes. The descriptions closely reflect and refract Brand's psychology and emotional state, and he becomes, in a sense, a proxy for ourselves, the readers. This is one of the things that marks, that, sorry, that makes fiction indispensable. It gives us a chance to experience the world from inside a consciousness, not our own. We crave that, which is why novels will never die. I encourage you to check out the rest of my short video series, The Fiction Chronicles, which is available, available for you uh, free. Uh, on my YouTube page, at TimWeed2. And if you'd like to support this work, it's really simple. Watch the videos, like them if you enjoy them, and become a subscriber. Thanks, and I hope you have a great day.